one of the really nice aspects of Haskell and also of the ML languages is that uh, pattern matching is there for us. Um, here's the factorial function now defined using pattern matching. Um, this was the old definition of fac. It used if then else, uh, but that is not very readable. So let's delete that and find a nicer definition of the fact function that uses pattern matching. And here's the idea. We write a definition by cases. So the factorial of 0 is 1 and the factorial of n, where n is any other number than 0, is then n times fact of n minus 1. Let's save that and load it into Haskell. Everything works as expected. What is fact of 5? Still 120. What's the type of fact? It's the good old type that we have before, so nothing has changed, but this is much more readable. How do we, uh, how do we, or how does Haskell evaluate this? Well, suppose we got fact of 5. Well, uh, the Haskell uh, interpreter will then say, ah, is there a function called fact? Yes, here is fact. Uh, this is 5, and then uh, Haskell reads the clauses of fact from start to finish until it finds one that matches is 5, 0, no it's not, so it cannot have been this clause that we should use, it must be this clause that we need to use, sorry. Here we go. So this is fact of 5, n is now 5, so this is 5 times fact of n minus 1, what is n minus 1? That's 4. Fact of n minus 4, let's use Let's run through the clauses from top to bottom again. Again, we see that uh, it's this clause that we need, fact of n. And eventually we reach um, fact of naught, and here we can finally use the first clause. So that's the general idea of, uh, of how we use pattern matching. Um, pattern matching may not look that impressive if you're only interested in integers, but once you get around to functions over lists, which I shall do now, uh, there's a lot to love about pattern matching. To better understand uh, pattern matching for functions over lists, we should have a closer look at lists first. Um, there is a list that we always run into, that's the empty list. It's just two square brackets. What's the type of the empty list? It's polymorphic type it is um, of type T list for any type T. We cannot tell from just looking at the empty list if it has type bool list or char list or integer list or something else. It is a polymorphic type. The empty list goes um, everywhere. Uh, how can we build lists? Well, there is a list constructor. Uh, it's colon colon. Uh, from Scheme, you know the similar constructor called cons. This is cons in Haskell, if you will. Um, and you can build any list from the empty list and consers. So true, comma false, comma true is just a shorthand for true, const onto false, const onto true, const onto the empty list. And this also tells us how we should uh, deal with pattern matching in, uh, in Haskell. Some basic functions over lists that can also be useful are the head and tail and length functions. Head of L uh, returns the first element of the list L, and its type is A list to A meaning that it takes, um, for any type A, it, um, it takes a list of elements of type A and returns uh, uh, an element of type A. So this is also a polymorphic function. The tail function uh, returns a list corresponding of all elements of the list except the first one. So its uh, type is A list to A list for any type A. And then there's a length function, which is also quite nice to have some time. 
and it returns the length of the list L and its type is well it takes an A list of any type A and then returns uh, a value of type integer. So those are some basic functions over lists and using what we have now uh, we can define some functions over lists using pattern matching and this is where everything uh, works together quite nicely. Let's have a look at this. First, let's get rid of this faculty thing and let's define uh, a function that appends to lists. And we'll call it app and one way of defining it is by using uh, head and tail. We can say if we have two lists, L1 and L2, well if L1 is empty, so if L1 is the empty list, then we simply return L2. Else, what do we do? Uh, remember, we can cons um, and we can make recursive calls and what do we do? Well, the idea is that we should uh, append this is a recursive call of the tail of L1 and we should append that to L2 and then in front of that we should put um, the head of L1 and we const that head onto the appended list. Let's see if that works. Oh yes it works okay so if I want to append app list 1, 2 Three, four. What do we get? We get one, two, three, four. Now that's nice. And we used the head function and the tail function, and that was nice, but it's not very readable. Pattern matching is our friend. Let's get rid of this uh, version of the append function and let's write it using pattern matching. And again, pattern matching lets us do definition by cases. So if we app, append the empty list to L2 we get L2. If we append something that is some first element const onto the rest of the list, we'll, we'll then refer to the first element as x and the remaining list, the tail of the list as xs, and we, and we append that to L2. What do we get? Well, we get x const onto app of xs and L2. Let's see if that works. It works out nicely. And let's now try to evaluate append again. This time, down here, app two, three, four. And voila, it gives us one, two, three, four again. So that's much nicer, isn't it? Now, um, one thing we haven't talked about yet is what is the type of the append function? What's the type of app? Well, let's see. Um, before we let Haskell tell us what it is, let's see if we can figure it out ourselves. Well, uh, app is a higher order function. It takes a list and then a list and it returns. Well, what does it return? It returns something of list type because here we use cons, so this must be. Um, something of list type. Uh, is there anything in the definition of app that tells us anything about the, the, the element type of the list? Do we know anything about the x's? Are they numbers or jars or bools or whatever? No, we know nothing about that. So this is a polymorphic function. We, we don't need to assume anything about uh, the type of the, the elements in the list, except that, of course, in all elements of the list must have the same type. Let's see what's the type of app. Ah, it is indeed a nice polymorphic type. It's a function that takes uh, something of type A list and then takes another uh, argument of type A list and we get back uh, a value of type A list. So that's nice really. It's very nice thing that's really nice to know uh, is that we can modularize uh, these definitions that we've just seen 
in a very nice way using local definitions. Um, and this also makes it much easier to see uh, the calculations that are going on. Uh, there are two kinds of local definitions. There are where de definitions. We place those after the expression in which they're used, and there are let definitions that are placed immediately before the expression in which they're used. And in both cases, indentation is important. Let's see what we mean by that. Here is our friend the app function. Um, now let's see if we can modularize out this part. We don't want that. Let's call this my list instead. And then afterwards, after this second clause, we'll write where my list is really that. So let's try to see if we can make Haskell eat that. That's uh, a where definition. Haskell will complain there's a parse error. The trick is that we must indent the where such that it's found here. Let's save again. Let's see if Haskell is more happy with this way of, 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 of indenting things. And yes, Haskell is a lot happier now. Um, that's the trick. We can, oops, we can append. One, two, three, and four. Let's see, what do we get? One, two, three, four. So this was a where definition, and indentation is important. Uh, alternatively, we could um, have a let definition. It is for this. It must be done. We could have a let definition. We could write let this in here. Let's write that. Will Haskell eat that? Oh yes, it will. A let happens before the expression in which we want to use the defined item. So here we're defining my list before we're using my list. And um, again, everything works out nicely. App of one, two, three, four is one, two, three, four. So we can use local definitions, we can use lets, and we can use where's. And whenever you write programs that are longer than a couple of lines, uh, lets and where's, these they could be really, really helpful. They will make your program a lot more readable. So please, please use those. One last thing I'd like to say is a little bit about uh, indentation and the two-dimensional syntax of Haskell. Because you may wonder if you look at something like this. Um, there are no semicolons. Something is s strange here. Why, how do we know that uh, this is a definition of something called y, and this is a definition of something called g. How do we know that we're not really having a g up here and an x here? Um, well, the reason for that is that uh, the reason that we actually pass this uh, as being two separate definitions is that we use a two-dimensional syntax in Haskell. It's called layout, and essentially it relies on declarations being lined up in columns and in this example uh, y and g begin in the same column. Um, there's a lot more uh, information about the two-dimensional syntax if you look at the Haskell report or in various Haskell tutorials but um, there's not really a lot you need to remember. Um, it's, um, it's important to, to remember that uh, indentation matters um, and the layout is just a shorthand. We, we, we can use semicolon if we want. We would then put um, a curly bracket here and we'd put a semicolon here and we would put a curly bracket here. But uh, the thing is that we don't need to do that as long as we use correct indentation as, we, as long as we put uh, our definitions in, in the same columns in the right way.